There's a major difference between AI content and quality AI content. Unfortunately, most people don't understand that. So that's why you see so many posts online that look the same, even though they're in different industries. Someone's talking about ice cream. It sounds the same as talking about marketing. So what do we do about that? In this video, I'm going to explain that. And it's based off the best video I've ever created on content automation and the version 3.0 template that we just released into the world. There was one feature in there that I didn't explain at all. And it was probably the most important feature of that entire template of that entire automation. And I'm going to explain that to you in this video. I'm also going to give you a full demo into the creative template wizard that I created, where you can literally take any piece of content online from all of your favorite creators, all of your favorite brands, and use the same copywriting techniques and frameworks that they use in your own brand too. So stick right through to the end in order to see this demonstration. Now, before we dive into that, I want to show in this diagram here, a framework that I used to use called Prime Prompt and Proof. And I actually realized now that I left out two really critical components of this framework, which I'm going to get to in a second. Now, what most people do up here in, in the top section is they simply just add into the ChatGPT dashboard, for example, write me a social media post about how to bake bread. Now, the AI will give you a response and to the untrained eye, it may actually look like a good response as well and a great post that you could then post onto social media. But what it's not taking into account is what type of bread, first and foremost. Secondly, what type of business are you running? Are you running in a gluten-free company? Because then you probably only want to talk about gluten-free bread. And thirdly, like what is your brand voice? Are you using a bit of cheek and humor? Are you super direct? Are you scientific? There's so many different directions that you could take that post, but most people don't go the extra mile, which is why a lot of the content looks the same and why people don't stand out. Now the framework that I built, which was Prime Prompt and Proof, and in Prime, we're actually giving it some information, and this is still true today. Every single template that I build is built off this framework, but with a few extra steps, which I'm gonna go through in a second. So priming is giving it some brand details. So what are your brand voice guidelines? What is your writing grade level? So a lot of the world read and write at a fifth grade level. So are you speaking to the most of the world or are you speaking to a more sophisticated audience where you might write at a sixth or seventh grade level? Who is your customer avatar as well? What are their pain points? What are their desires? These things are super critical in order to get the best results from your prompts. And then we have the prompt itself, which is the instruction that we give to the AI. And it typically starts with your task is to, or we give it some type of context, like you're an expert SEO content writer and your task is to write this blog post about bread. So the, that's the prompt itself. And most people just stick to the prompt, which I make sense because that's all the, the AI is asking for, right? But then also a very important part of this is then proofing that prompt to make sure that it is aligned with your brand, that it sounds right, that it doesn't have any of your typical AI sounding things in there and eliminating or editing that stuff out. Again, this is a step that most people don't do because of probably laziness or just not knowing what good content actually is. Now there are two extra things that need to go in here. And this is the secret sauce when it comes to why we're getting such great results of Content Automation OS, the template that I've spent the last 12 months building and we're now on version 3.0, and also the, how we're using it inside of our business to launch products, create email series, launch ads that are really high quality when we do use a template. So templates are taking viral posts and using them as the framework for the output that you wanna get. I'm gonna do a demo in just a second. Also using proven series for emails or proven ads that you find on Facebook or Instagram. So we want to use these templates in order to steer the AI in the right direction so that instead of having millions of possibilities of what it could create, it's very targeted towards exactly what you want. And then once we do that, we also want to provide it with an output example of what a good quality post would look like using that template. These are absolutely critical. So how does that actually look? Let's dive into the dashboard. So inside our Content Automation OS dashboard, which create, helps you create AI content, high quality AI content for all types of different content workflows, we are providing it with all of those things I mentioned in the priming section. So we actually call this our brand settings, which includes our brand assets, includes all the AI models that we use throughout every single workflow and uh, a few other things as well. So we're talking about brand voice guidelines. We have our writing grade level here. We have our excluded words. Now it doesn't always follow that, but we can at least try. It's getting better and better each year. We have our customer avatar. We have a little bit more about the brand down here. So these are all the important things that we're feeding into every single AI prompt automatically with our AI automations. 
But the secret sauce is really the prompt library. So a prompt library is our entire library of all the prompts that we consistently use for each of our automations. Now this is important because successful business comes from repeating the same things that drive revenue or drive sales or drive growth for your business over and over again and making small iterations every time. So if you're just using the ChatGPT dashboard, for example, and you're just prompting different prompts every single time when you're working on different pieces of content, then you don't really know what you're doing. You're just guessing your way through the entire workflow. Whereas now that we have our prompt library, we have the prompts that we are using every single time, which is the first step. The second step is iterating on those prompts so that we can get them exactly how we want them. But there's also a third step, which not a lot of people do. And that's what we call a good output example. Not a very creative name, but it is very, a very creative process where in this instance, if I open this up, this is the template for writing an email about three big mistakes. So here we have in brackets, different sections of asking the AI to write this type of email using this type of framework or template. So we're zooming out and we're just giving it some context of every single section of the email rather than just saying, hey, write me an email about three big mistakes. So if you just ask it a generalized prompt, it typically isn't going to provide certain frameworks that you need within your copy when it comes to copywriting frameworks in order to provide enough context to the audience, to appeal to the pain points enough, to really get them moving in the same direction that you want them to move so that they can then take an action. So first we're providing it with that template. Then we are saying, here's an example of how of that template in progress and a really good output that we're happy with. Now we say that a whole lot better inside of the prompt itself, but that's basically what we're saying is use this template. Here's a really great output for that template. Now we want you to replicate that, but with different information that we're going to feed into this AI automation so that you can use it for any type of content or any type of context that you are providing to the AI. Now, if I'm losing you, let me give you a demo so that you can see exactly what we mean. So here we have the transcript for the content automation OS video that I put out recently on YouTube. Like I said, it is trending at number one. It's the most engaged video I've had. So if you wanna check that out and see this full dashboard in use and how it all works together, then go ahead and do that after this video. But what we can do at this stage is we've got our details up the top here, including our transcript. So as we scroll down, we can now get to the next stage of the prompt where we begin to create some extra parts of the video. So here we can add in prompts for social media, we can add in prompts for email, whatever you want in this stage, you can basically ask the AI to reference the transcript, reference all your brand voice guidelines, and then use this prompt in order to transform it into whatever you need, whether that's social posts, emails, like I said, all of those types of things. But in this case, what I'm actually going to do is create a brand new prompt here in front of you using this GPT that I have called Creative Template Wizard. And if you do purchase any of our products and you get access to this for free, and we're gonna create a fully templatized output from an, a, an email that we add into this GPT. Now the email that I'm going to add is by one of my old clients who's actually in the artist space so it's not completely aligned with what we're talking about here either. So I'm just gonna paste this one in here like this and I'm going to just hit go. And we can see now that it's going to create a fully templatized output based on that template. So it transforms this headline here or this first line here of do you feel like you're not getting consistent art income to the first option here, which is question subject line about achieving, achieving consistent income or goal. So it's going, it's allowing us to go a bit broad so that let's say you're in the health space, for example, and you're not really talking about income, you're probably talking about a goal. So we can see now it's just taken line by line and it's zoomed right out in order to give us the copywriting framework that is underneath the copy that has actually been provided. So what the AI will do in the content dashboard is it will reference all of the transcript, for example, in this instance, and it will follow this template and then it'll create its own really great output. So let's just copy this now. And we're gonna come across into the dashboard and we're gonna to go to the prompt library. And we're gonna go add prompt and we're just gonna add the prompt in here. Now you would also just wanna remove these lines here. And just this alone is gonna to start to steer the AI in a much better direction than if you were to just give it 
any type of parameter or any scope that it has millions of different directions to go down. Now it knows exactly a path to go down so we can get much better outputs, but we don't stop there either. So let's just give it a name, which we'll just call it artist example, and we'll call this one email copy, and we'll just call this content marketing. So now we have this one here, where it's, we've got the prompt text, but we also have an extra field called good output example. And what we can do is we can take that full email that we copied and put it here like this. So now we have both the prompt that we wanted to follow, the template prompt, then we have a good output example. So it's like, okay, here's the template we want you to follow. Here's also a really great copywriting example that's in another niche. And now if we come back into our workflow, we come back into the content that we're creating, we're saying reference all of that transcript that we're talking about up the top here, reference the brand voice guidelines as well. Let's find this prompt now. And then we're saying, here's the prompt and here's a really great output that you can uh, reference in order to steer the AI output in this direction. Then let's give it a trigger and let's look at the quality that comes out compared to if you're just to ask it to write an email for this transcript. So here you can see we've got the artist example and let's read through the content here. So I'm going to work through this entire email and read it out to you and you can follow along as well and you can see the difference in quality. Struggling to hit your income goals as a business owner. I hear this from entrepreneurs all the time. It's the number one concern that keeps coming up in our community, the challenge of creating predictable revenue that lets you scale confidently. Many business owners dream of having a reliable growing income stream, but they feel stuck, overwhelmed, or frustrated by the constant need to create and promote content. Does this sound familiar? Let's be honest. How many times have you felt buried under the endless tasks of content creation, social posting, and email marketing? Are you avoiding consistent marketing because it feels like a full-time job in itself? Or maybe because you worry about coming across as too salesy? I bet there are days when you wonder if this whole content marketing thing is even worth the effort. Picture this, you've just wrapped up an amazing month in your business and you're right in high of success until you remember all the marketing tasks you've been putting off, creating social media content, writing a newsletter, recording videos, updating your website. Your enthusiasm deflates as you think about the endless content treadmill ahead. You're great at serving your clients, but putting yourself out there consistently, that's another story. And creating content that actually converts that feels like advanced calculus. You start questioning if you're a cutout for building a scalable business in today's digital world. Looking at your content output from the last few months makes you cringe, it's sporadic at best. As a business owner, you're already wearing too many hats. Adding content created to the mix feels impossible to sustain. You're left with three options. A, let your marketing slide and hope referrals sustain you. B, hire expensive agencies or freelancers to handle it. C, force yourself to create content burning out in the process. None of these feel right. And choosing between time, money, or burnout isn't the path to a sustainable growth. You're left feeling stuck and frustrated, all because maintaining consistent marketing feels like an impossible mountain to climb. If you want to attract ideal clients, build genuine connections with your audience, and create predictable revenue, you need a better way to handle your content marketing. Watch your inbox in my next email. I'll share why so many business owners struggle with this and what might be holding you back from breaking through. So as you can see, that's a pretty amazing email. And what we can do now is we can find all of our favorite creators, all of the brands that we know that have amazing copywriters, that have amazing website copy, that have amazing ads. We can begin to take their frameworks from them and use them in our own business. So it's pretty incredible what this can do. And it allows every single business in the world to level up, to be writing copy on par with the best in the world. And I hate this saying because you see it all the time from content creators on TikTok, but part of this does feel like it should be illegal. Like the amount of up-leveling that it takes normal AI outputs to creating really high quality stuff is pretty incredible. Like the email there really speaks for itself. So this is the enclosed prompting systems that we need in order to be 10 times faster. I'm not interested in using ChatGPT dashboard every single day to try and make my team a little bit faster. I'm interested in how can we be 10 times faster than we have been and, and more productive than we have been in the past while also enhancing the quality of the outputs. 
we definitely don't want to go backwards. That is for sure. So I hope this was helpful. And I hope I explained this in a way that opens your eyes to what's really possible and how we can use these AI automation tools at a much higher level than what most people are. And I say this because there is an opportunity right now where the landscape of business is changing. We're moving from having dozens and dozens of software tools to having our own customized integrated tools that work exactly for us, exactly how you want them to work for your business. That's the direction that we're heading. We, we no longer need to have so many complicated workflows with dozens of different tools. It's time to now learn these skills to build our own workflows so that we can be 10 times more efficient while still ensuring that the quality is much higher than ever before. So if you like this one, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.